On to our next amazing speaker, uh, Yasmin Hopkins. Yasmin was diagnosed at the age of 11 and since then fought for the best treatments to suit her lifestyle and environment. It was TAD 2022 that gave her the motivation to engage and support others in the diabetes community and give a voice to all individuals. I'm also going to welcome up Jen Greaves. Uh, Jen Greaves is a broadcaster and writer living with type 1 diabetes since 1996. Jen launched the Type 1 on 1 Diabetes podcast in 2019 in a bid to help others feel less alone. Uh, Yasmin and Jen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, everyone. How exciting. How are we all? Good. Yeah? Great. Um, so give me a little cheer if you've never been in a room with this many people with type 1 diabetes before. Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a little cheer if you've already spoken to someone that you've never met before this morning. Yeah. How cool is that? Um, you brought yourself here, you did that. And, you know, we as type 1s achieve more before we've woken up than everyone else achieves you know in a week and I, I think it's it's easy to forget that um how much we're doing that being said it would be nice not to be dealing with this wouldn't it so um the tech the tech is really helping us along the way here and someone who knows this very very well is lovely yasmin here hi Ooh, yasmin hi. so first of all i'm feeling like the lesser ed and james right now yeah like, <laughs> sorry about like, that guys sorry guys not as funny <laughs> nowhere near as cool um, but yeah, so... I think we're pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, my name's Jasmine. Um, I've put a little... This is my claim to fame. Partha once called me the face of closed loop. Claim to fame. Fully taking that. Um, so you may have seen me around. I've been trying to get as much information out there as possible for all of us as type ones to make decisions about if we want closed loops, if we don't, what's correct for us and what's maybe not right for us. Um, so first of all, I just want to put a massive disclaimer out there. I do work for Nova Nordisk, um, but today I'm here as a patient with type 1 diabetes. Nothing to do with Novo. Um, so please don't ask. Um, so we're just going to kind of look at where I've got to yeah, so far. Yeah, your amazing story. So um, yeah, Partha likes to call you the face of the closed loop. And, um, I think it's befitting, but <laughs> as you might be able to tell from this timeline, wasn't a straight leap into the tech for you at all. So do you want to kind of talk us through this, this journey that you've been on? Yeah, I'll kind of highlight some areas that may relate to a lot of people. Um, we've spoken about diagnosis and things like that, and we all have different diagnosis stories. Um, I was diagnosed at 11 years old. My parents had no idea what diabetes was. Went to the GP because my dog weighed more than me, which was quite shocking. I was very small as well, but um, went to the GP. The doctor went, oh, you're diabetic. And I went, oh, cool. <laughs> no idea, literally no idea. Mum, no idea. Um, so yeah, that was my kind of first interaction with diabetes. No one in the family, anything like that. Um, fast forward. Typical, not even going to go over there. Childhood, teenager, don't want anything to do with it. Um, you had your paper diaries. Everyone remember paper diary and you get a different colour pen and fill that in just before you went. Yeah, that was me. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I did I mine did... in the same pen. I was trying to oh. find it. I was being sneaky. I was no, like, you do a different colour pen every day. So then they thought, oh. they they thought you took it out with you. People do that, right? This is okay. Smart. <laughs> this is smart. <laughs> Mine was also covered in blood spots from fingers. Yeah. Prints. Oh no. And then I'd get my dinner and be like smear it on like a certain page and be like, <laughs> oh well, I've obviously eaten there. Yeah. Dedication. Whole Dedication. thing. Whole thing. Um, so yeah. Fast forward. Uh, Seventeen. I was popped on my first pump. Um, and this is why I do a lot of this work now because actually, thinking about it in hindsight, I was not ready. Uh, I was very active. Believe it or not, I am a black belt in karate. So I did karate three okay. times a week. I danced five times a week as well. And all of that is with type ones. So parents, if you've got kids, don't stop them. We can do it. Many hypos, but I'm here. Um, so it, well, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for the, the commitment. 
Um, it wasn't flexible enough for me back then as well. Of course, things have changed and we will get there. But it wasn't ready for me. And I think that advice still applies now, even with the amazing technologies. It does take some away the burden, but you've still got to have the mental capacity to learn. And for the healthcare professionals in the room, and I speak to so many healthcare professionals about this, you are amazing, but it's still going to take time. Just because we've got these magical closed loops does not mean that it's fixed in a second. We need support. And that's the biggest thing from healthcare professionals. So I went back onto injections. Um, you can see some of my HbA1c's up there. Sorry. I mean, oh, talking to a room full of diabetics, we know. <laughs> we know. Uh, you can kind of see it just kept going up and down. I went to university and I was like, I've got independence. I was doing amazing things of just on injections. And then all of a sudden, no, nope, I got ill. Something happened. Um, so massive waves. Freestyle Libra came in. Brilliant. Self-funded it. My nanny actually did. Left that and then unfortunately she passed away. But then, luckily, thank you, Partha and team, we got access on NHS prescription. I got my second pump. I was ready. I knew what it could do for me and I was ready. I knew that it was going to take time for me to really learn carb counting and not just sit there and go, yeah, it's a sandwich, that's around 30 grams. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fine. Really learn carb counting, structured education. Um, and I was ready for it in my own lifestyle and where I was. Um, did you go onto the same pump out of curiosity? I did. Right. Never been asked that. Never been asked that. Yeah, so it's exactly the same pump, same system, same cannulas. But like I say, just that time in my life, I was ready. Uh, and then 2021 came. I have an amazing diabetes team. And I did my degree in biomed. I'm very, literally, my, I work in diabetes. My life is diabetes. I'm very boring as a person. So they kind of put these feelers out. The team put these feelers out of, oh, there's a new technology that, we, that NICE is going to pilot. And I went, I know what that is. Instantly jumped at the time, at the chance. You can see my HbA1c was way above what it needed to be at 92. Um, so it was easily in there. And that's when I started Closed Loop. That's interesting as well, because I think um, James and Ed alluded to it, especially in a room like this, you yep. feel like everyone's on a pump and it's going to be this magical solution. But actually your HP won't see there, not that it's all about the numbers. And I think the numbers are often a marker of other things that are going yep. on in your life. And, and they're kind of a tool that you can use to, to dig in. They're not the end point. But even with your second pump there, you've still got these, these things going on for yeah. you. Yeah, 100%. I was on a normal pump and still... For me, like every single person, I mean, whose blood sugars get affected by stress? <laughs> whose blood sugars get affected by flu slash cold slash hay fever slash anything that makes your nose run? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so even with that, it, those things are so uncontrollable um, and that's difficult. So yeah, even with a kind of what I would say a normal standard pump, still difficult. And I'm really glad you kind of brought up the numbers point and things like that. And I, I will go further into it a bit later in the presentation. But for me, I understand that everyone's like, I want this technology. I need this new technology. But we do have to be there for one, and each, one another. And there has to be a system of who gets it first. And I will come back to that. Um, but yeah, finally, I did put it on there last year. I attended TAD with my lovely boyfriend, who's probably very bored, um, last year. And that's what kick-started me, coming out, uh, being in the community. I mean, I'm staring at Amanda right now. The DSM Forum invited me to speak. Um, I speak at work all the time. I do as much as possible. And just really kind of try to speak for people that may not be as confident as I am. I went to drama school for 18 years. I do not mind talking in front of people. <laughs> so that's always something to me. If you ever need anything to be raised, give me a shout. So yeah. Amazing. And I mean, the journey continues. Mm. So I'm someone, you know, it took me 18 years to come around to the idea of a pump. And as we said, it's a very personal decision. It's not like a be all and end all or a magic solution. No. It was the tubing for me that held me off. But I think just confidence in myself and where I was at in my life, just like you, I think if I had said yes before, who knows? It's different. You have to, I think you just have to know in yourself that it's something you can give 
your, your energy too to, to understand because it's a tool that you like you say you have to work with it right and um, closed loops for me I'm still a bit like <laughs> oh, what's this thing that everyone's talking about and, uh, and I know it's changing people's lives which is so exciting but as yet I mean it's it's not something I've Ooh. dug into <laughs> so for people who you know are curious or well you know it's coming and, and obviously you speak so enthusiastically about it and the tech is just advancing advancing it's so exciting so tell us a little bit about what is a hybrid closed loop yeah. So for me, as I mentioned, I'm on, I, I was on the NICE pilot, which is done, the NICE consultation's in, but I've stuck to it. Um, my system, as you can see, is T-Slim with Dexcom G6, which I am absolutely in love with. I've always, like we discussed earlier, I've always liked tubed pumps. I like to go, right, I know that's there, but tomorrow I'm gonna wear a dress, so I'm gonna put it up there. Oh, tomorrow, uh, whatever. I like a tubed pump for my individuality. And I always, always challenge anyone to come up with a disease where every single person is on a different treatment regime. Not a single one of us in this room is going to be taking the same carb ratio, the same correction ratios, anything. Not a single one of us. So there are dis different systems. And I think that's really important to note. You have to kind of look for that. And of course, tubeless pumps, we'll see them coming in towards the end of the year for hybrid closed loop. But the system that I've got, you'll see, I've done a really nice diagram. This is as good as my IT skills get. <laughs> um, the sensor tells my insulin pump, your bloods are going a bit high. So my one in particular, around 12, it will say, can you just kick in a little bit more? So it just automatically gives me a little bit more insulin. And again, if I start to go low, then it shuts my insulin pump off. It's really that simple and easy. And it's a little loop. Um, it, it can't be described in any other way as a little bit of magic. Um, like I say, I am scientific minded. I'm not technology minded though. So please do not ask me how they talk to each other because I do not know. <laughs> And obviously, we'll come on to like the difference in your numbers. But what about the difference it's made to your life? Because I mean, personally, for me, thinking at it from my lifestyle, like I've had type one for 27 years and those disturbed nights of sleep, they add up. I'm, I'm a little bit tired at this point. Yeah. So how has it affected you in terms of you being able to be a person in the world and not think about this so much? Yeah. So related to that. Who here is a partner of someone with diabetes and hasn't got diabetes himself? Or a carer? No, they need to be in the same bed. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stand correct. Bit weird, <laughs> bit weird. Um, again, my lovely boyfriend is here. And you talk about sleepless nights. We still get alarms. We still get vibrations and half the time I don't wake up because I'm so used to them and I get a nudge going, shut up. They still happen. OK, it's really important. These things still happen. However, for me, I've had way less severe hypos. So I'm saying I get a little bit shaky. I alarm, as we all do. Um, but like I said, the, the pump actually knows, right, no more insulin. So what that means for me is there's none of those kind of really horrible, I can't even stand up and touch wood. I've never gone low enough to collapse or drop to the floor. But there's none of those kind of risks anymore. The big one for me is, and I don't really know how I've managed to do it, I've got this far without complications, um, related to diabetes, I have a lot of other medical conditions, but not related to my diabetes. My time in range, and these are the numbers that everyone's gonna be like, so yes, before I was at 30% time in range, okay? And I know we talk about numbers not being bad, but that is not ideal. I was at risk of complications, something needed to change, I was, spending my life just doing everything and it, it I don't know whatever um you try not to get emotional at that part when you're talking about those things um and yeah now I'm at at least 80 percent at least diabetics tend to make 180 health related decisions a day I think I probably just put my carbs in I drive for my job, 
I never have to think, oh no, hang on a minute, am I going to get below five at some point? Never a problem at all. These little decisions that we think about are gone. Today, unfortunately, well, unfortunately, maybe depends how you think this talk's going. I'm going to be running straight off um, after this. It's my brother's birthday. So I'm going to go on a pub crawl. <laughs> to half the audience, I'm sure you're like, oh my God, what? what? No, you can't do that. <laughs> I'm fine, honestly. And something um, Rose Stewart said, and I always laugh because this woman does not know who I am, by the way. She's a psychologist, and I hope she's not here today. No? She's a psychologist, and I watched one of her talks, and she once said, time in range is better, uh, time in range for time in happiness. Okay? Time and happiness can mean so much more to us. And as long as you're not going 30% time in range, I know, I know, we're decreasing those risks. Um, energy wise, yeah, it's incredible. Like I say, I can go a full on pop crawl and not need a nap. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but the bit most one I think that's going to really like shout out to everyone else is the diabetes distress. So, you know, I said earlier about talking about like the numbers, and Ed and James mentioned it about you're not in control, so you get a pump. Now, we have to think we don't want to bust the NHS, first of all. I was out of control. My diabetes distress was ridiculously high. However, I know as an individual as well that you're, you're, you could be in the best control ever, but that could also be because you're in the height of your diabetes distress. You're at burnout, and then you're just going to give up. This is why we've got to be so careful of categorizing people by time and range. Um, <coughs> But we need to start somewhere. And the people with the time and range the lowest are obviously the people with more at risk of complications, so forth and so forth. That's where we need to start. We need to be here as a community and say, actually, Yasmin was at 30% time and range. Her HbA1c, I also didn't put my worst HbA1c up there. I'm now like thinking, yeah, I'll tell you. It was above 100 in new money. That's not good. So that's why we really need to think about those people. And it will come. It really will. Can you imagine everyone getting a CGM a few years ago? Can you imagine that? Like, physically, I, the work that NHS England have done in the diabetes team is incredible. So we're there, and we will get there. Um, just talk about the challenges really quickly. Really looking at the yeah, time. Um, the transition. Uh, you've, been, you've had it a lot longer than I have, 10 years longer than I have. I've been diabetic for 17 years now. It's not quite an adult yet. But what that means is all of a sudden you do let this thing do everything for you. And you get that a little bit with the uh, non-closed loop. There's still less. But I had three months of honeymoon. And I think Leslie mentioned it, didn't she? She said, when you've got something new and shiny, you're like, ooh, can't wait. And then it was all of a sudden I went into meltdown. I was overriding it. I was saying, nope, you're not correcting quick enough. I'm at 12. Why am I at 12? and all of that. So there is that education and the healthcare professionals in the room, I'm looking at you because actually I needed my, my diabetes specialist nurse to turn around to me and say, that is okay. Stop. Okay? That is fine. And that's what it's going to take now. So when we do move to everyone getting access to these things and looking at the future, that relationship between you and your healthcare professional has become so much tighter. And also, I always say this to do with working and jobs. Name me a better example of team working than a patient with diabetes and their healthcare professionals. There is no better example. If you work together and have honesty, unfortunately, I know there might be a few bad C's out there, but we won't talk about them. You will be the best example of team working ever. You could get any job in the world. I'm sorry. I think it's amazing what we do. So yeah, um, I've already discussed the alarms and the uh, carb counting, which um, still every now and then, like, oh, this cake looks like a serving and a half. <laughs> Things like that, but yeah. Amazing. Um, Yasmin's really keen to take some questions yes. from you guys. And she has been very clear to me that there is no question too personal. So yes, make no question too personal. Um, but if you're curious about this stuff or have some like, 
you know, you want to know more. Like, this is an amazing journey. And thank yep. you so much, Yasmin, for sharing that. Um, but we'd love to take some questions, if there's anyone. Quick questions. Quick questions, yeah. Because we are kind yep. of over. Have we got um, any mics? We may oh, have. Just shout. I'll, re I'll repeat the question. Um, yeah, how does the closed loop system like deal with that or how do you kind of feel that? Yep, so um, personally, uh, I've tried pretty much every sensor in the world um, and they're all going to have inaccuracy. Sensors work in not into the blood glucose, so you will get that. What I do find though is the Dexcom G6 for me, and again, completely individualised, is pretty accurate. Um, and what that means though, because the system is constantly correcting, if it suddenly jumps, it will just switch it off. It will just turn it on. It's so safe um, to the point where you can even, and this is why I like the T-SIM. Sorry if anyone's on anything else. I like the T-SIM version. You can also turn closed looping off. If you think, you know what, I need just five minutes of stop, and you think that's not accurate enough. Uh, I'm also part of the GB doc group chat that was mentioned earlier. Hi, everyone. Um, and I had to say the other day, I said, guys, Look, I've been that person. I haven't finger pricked in a good two years. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know where my machine is. I don't know. It wouldn't even turn on. I did find it, by the way. It wouldn't even turn on. Things like that. And I kind of said, help me. What do I do? It, it turned out fine. I got a blood glucose meter. It was fine. Everything was normal. So you've just kind of got to give that bit of trust and know that you're in safe hands. I'm still here. <laughs> Any other really quick questions? Like really quick? There's one here. Yeah. I'm, I'm a and Dexcom, and when I first got it, it was blue. Um, uh, had a really good trusted uh, sensor. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. Thank you. I had a good trusted um, diabetes nurse who knew me well and knew the pump. Um, and then she retired. And then my new diabetes nurse doesn't know so much and for the last year I haven't been able to get the results what would you recommend in that situation because I know that I should probably look look up what I need to do I don't have that much time but <laughs> I need to none of us have time don't worry I mean we're full of running around trying to look after this anyway um a similar thing so I'm originally from Dorset so I'm from Bournemouth team I now live in London I have not moved my team purely for that matter. Um, I love my team. They've looked after me since I was 11. Not going to move. However, I have moved GP surgery to GP surgery. I've lived in every part of London possible. What I would say to you is take control. If you feel like that healthcare professional does not know enough, say to them, like, look, this is how this works, and this is how I've been taught. What's your opinion on that, first of all? Because it may be that they've just got a, mis a very basic misunderstanding. Remember, this is new to them as well. They don't have time. Healthcare professionals push so hard for these things, but then it's the education, and it will come to them as well. It really will. But take control of that situation. You can then take control of your diabetes. You'll be real motivated for the self-care. But I would honestly, especially if it's... I don't know, I'm going to say this in front of Papa. If it's a DSN, they're probably way more engaging. He's a different breed. Um, <laughs> way more engaging, way more understanding. Pop them an email honestly, and just say, look, I'm not happy with this. Let's discuss it. And educate them. Take the control. It's your body, your disease. Okay. Oh, we're way over time. Oh, okay. got one more question. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I do this. Have you got a moment for another question? Yeah, 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 go on. So I have eventually got funding for a pump. Yay. And I've been offered three. And I can't make my mind up because... <laughs> I'd like to do closed looping when that comes in. Yes. And I think if I pick the wrong one, and then that doesn't go to the close, and as a result, I'm stuck. I don't know what to do. Yeah. So most pumps have warranties of two to five years, and that usually is the duration you'll be on them. I think for yourself, it depends on what the NICE guidance is. That could change. Um, but what I would say now is your diabetes healthcare is now. It's not in two years. It's right now. You need to choose what's most suitable for you in this present time. Because if you think, oh, I'm going to go on a tubed pump because I've seen that does closed loop. 
If tube pumps aren't right for you, you won't even end up getting there. It's not worth it. You've got to look after yourself here in the now. That's the best advice I can give on that one. Uh, let, me, uh, let me answer that a little bit, a little bit, a little bit probably unfair on Yasmin to take that question. Uh, I think <clears throat> you're probably best to wait a little bit till all the information is available as to what companies are going to make available, what is going to be available on the NHS uh, before that jump is made. And to be fair to most clinicians, uh, not everybody knows yet, and that's not their fault because we haven't uh, finalized everything with all the companies. So I think with closed loops, it's coming, but it's not going to come for everybody straight away because, and that's not because, oh, X needs to go and that and all. It's simply because the capacity. So there has to be these groups of people will probably need to go ahead. And that's a conversation we're having with pediatric colleagues and should children go before adults? Instinctively, you feel like, well, that sounds right, but we also got adult center. So there's a bit of a balance as we go along. We also have to look after people. I mean, let's not forget that we are also in a room of a degree of privilege. There's a bubble here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's about 65,000 people with type one diabetes out there who don't have a pump, even though they are eligible for a pump. So it's also the deprivation factor and all that. So there is a lot to balance as we go along. But I would say we are in very exciting times. And uh, give it time. It will happen. And I think to the lady who asked the question about the nurse specialist, <coughs> it, is, it is important that we do keep ourselves upgraded as we go along. But the pace of change in the type 1 world is electric at the moment. Right? And some of it is also because of what we do in policy. We are pushing people in very, very stretched environments. So I think there's a balance as we go along. But I always ask everybody to take a step back and just think of where we were when we started TAD mm -hmm. and where we are now. And I think it's a progress. We, we will get there. And uh, you know, we have industry colleagues where everybody's together. So you know, we got you have examples. You know, Asmin was on a loop, the pilot, the next stage. So Give it time, give it patience, we'll get there, for sure. Ooh. I think we're going to run away because I'm pretty sure I'm getting tired of that. Thank you so much for your questions and thank you so much, Yasmin, for sharing your story. Yeah.